No. Uh, but I do have, <laughs> I do have a long work day. Um, yeah, so. Picture this. You are trying to leave your house for a long road trip. Some days the front road is flooded, other days the back road is jammed. If you only had one driveway, you would miss a lot of trips. If you had two driveways, life gets easier. One would be in front and one would be in back. This simple idea explains why SpaceX launches rockets from both sides of the United States. One side faces the Atlantic Ocean, the other faces the Pacific Ocean. That choice sounds boring, but it is not. It changes everything, no rocket or Orbit is locked to one coast. Any orbit can be reached from anywhere if you burn enough fuel. Fuel is what pushes the rocket. But fuel costs money. Fuel also takes up space. More fuel means less room for cargo. That is the trick. The coast you launch from decides how much fuel you waste. You want to get pointed the right way as fast as possible. A rocket launch is like throwing a ball while riding in a moving car. If you throw it forward, it goes faster. If you throw it sideways, you waste energy. The Earth spins east. At the middle of the Earth, the ground moves about 1,000 miles per hour. That is faster than a jet plane. Florida sits closer to the middle of the Earth than most of the U.S. So when a rocket launches east from Florida, the Earth gives it a free push. That push is about 1,000 feet per second. That is like starting a car already rolling downhill. That free push is worth more than many engine upgrades. It saves so much fuel that it can decide if a mission is cheap or expensive. SpaceX uses Florida for most of its big missions. They send people and heavy supplies to the space station from there. They also send big satellites into high orbits. But sometimes you do not want to go east. Sometimes you want to go over the North Pole and the South Pole. This is called a polar orbit. Imagine a ball of yarn. If you wrap the string around the middle, you are doing an equatorial orbit. If you wrap the string from top to bottom, you are doing a polar orbit. To do a polar orbit from Florida, you have to fly over land. You would fly over cities like Miami or countries in South America. If the rocket breaks, it could fall on people. That is a huge safety risk. So for a long time, we did not do many polar launches from the East Coast. California is the answer to this problem. When you launch south from California, you only fly over the ocean. There is nothing but water for thousands of miles. This makes it very safe. SpaceX uses its pad in California to launch groups of small satellites. These satellites need to see the whole Earth as it spins under them. By using both coasts, SpaceX never gets stuck. If a storm hits Florida, they can still launch from California. If a pad in California needs repairs, they can still work in Florida. This keeps their schedule moving. It is like a store that stays open 24 hours a day. They are always ready to go. This is a big part of why they fly more than anyone else. SpaceX makes their own engines called Raptor engines. These engines can change their power smoothly. Think of it like the gas pedal in your car. You can press it a little or a lot. Raptor engines can go from 40% power to 100% power. This is very important for landing. Most old rocket engines are like a light switch. They are either full blast or they are off. Imagine trying to park your car if the engine only had two settings. You would either be sitting still or flooring it at 100 miles per hour. You would probably crash into the garage. SpaceX engines allow the rocket to hover and move gently. They can make tiny adjustments to stay balanced. It is like balancing a broomstick on your finger. You have to move your hand quickly to keep it upright. The rocket's computer does this by changing the engine power and direction. This technical mastery is why they can land rockets on ships in the ocean. It is also why they can land them back on the ground. No one else in the world does this as often as they do. It has become their signature move. The cost of space has always been the biggest wall. One SLS launch costs $4.1 billion. That is according to the people who check NASA's spending. To help you understand that number, think about this. $4.1 billion is enough money to buy every person in a large stadium a luxury car. It is a massive amount of money for just one flight. SpaceX wants to change that. They want Starship to cost about $10 million 
million per launch. That means one SLS launch costs four ten times more than one Starship launch. You could fly Starship every single day for a year and still spend less than one SLS flight. This is the competitive scoreboard that matters. If one company can fly for 10 million and another costs 4 billion, the winner is clear. This is about protecting resources. It is about using your tax dollars in a way that actually gets us to the moon and Mars. When money is wasted, we stay on the ground. When money is saved, we go further. This is not just about being cheap, it is about being efficient. It is about building a system that can last for decades without breaking the bank. SpaceX builds almost everything themselves. This is called internal supply chains. Most big companies like Boeing buy parts from hundreds of different sellers. One company makes the screws, another makes the tanks, another makes the software. If one seller is late, the whole rocket is late. Boeing had many problems with their Starliner ship because of this. The Starliner failure happened because parts did not work together. It sat on the ground for years while SpaceX kept flying. Engineers knew that the old way of building was slow. They knew that waiting for parts was killing progress. SpaceX decided to make their own parts in their own factories. If they need a new valve, they just print it or build it. They do not have to wait for a shipping truck from another state. This cuts waiting time by months. It also saves money because they are not paying for another company's profit. They only pay for the metal and the work. This is strategic intelligence. It is a way to control your own destiny. If something breaks, they can fix it in hours instead of weeks. They do not have to call a meeting with five different companies to find out what happened. There is a big difference in how these companies are paid. NASA usually uses guaranteed money contracts. This means the company gets paid even if they are late. It means they get paid even if the rocket does not work. This is how Boeing and other old companies have worked for a long time. They do not have a reason to move fast because the money keeps coming. SpaceX works differently. They get paid for performance. If they do not fly, they do not get paid. If they fail, they lose the contract. This creates a competence hierarchy. The people who can actually do the job move to the top. The people who just talk stay at the bottom. Justice through consequences is a powerful tool. It forces people to be better. It forces them to learn from their mistakes. When SpaceX had their first rockets blow up, they did not get a check from the government to cover it. They had to fix it themselves. They had to prove they were the best. This pressure made them the most reliable launch company in history. They have now flown hundreds of times without a single failure of their main rocket. Boeing has struggled to keep up with this new world. Their Starliner failure was a big blow to their reputation. It was a ship meant to carry people to the space station, but it had software issues and valve problems. It cost more than it was supposed to. It took much longer than promised. This is a pattern we see with old aerospace companies. They are used to the old way where they were the only choice. Now they have to compete with a company that moves 10 times faster. Boeing's problems are not just about bad luck. They are about a system that got too comfortable. They they forgot how to be hungry. They forgot how to build things quickly. While SpaceX was launching rockets every week, Boeing was still doing paperwork. This is the difference between a company run by builders and a company run by accountants. One wants to reach the stars, the other wants to protect the budget. This has caused huge delays in our plan to get back to the moon. We are waiting on old systems that just are not ready yet. The scale of these rockets is hard to imagine. Starship is 120 meters tall. That is about as tall as a 40-story building. Imagine a skyscraper sitting on a launch pad. Then imagine that skyscraper flying into the sky at thousands of miles per hour. It weighs about 5,000 tons when it is full of fuel. That is as heavy as a whole fleet of school buses. When it launches, the noise is so loud it can shake buildings miles away. But the most amazing part is how they catch it. 
SpaceX built giant towers with arms. These arms are called chopsticks. When the giant booster comes back from space, it does not land on legs. It flies right into the tower. The arms close and catch it in midair. This sounds like science fiction, but they have already done it. This is technical mastery at the highest level. By catching the rocket, they do not need heavy landing legs. This saves weight. It also means they can put the rocket back on the pad and launch it again very quickly. They do not have to spend weeks cleaning it or moving it. It is ready to go almost immediately. The timeline for the moon is changing. NASA said we would land people on the moon in 2026, then they said 2027. Now many people think it will be 2028 or later. Here is why that matters. China says they will land on the moon by 2030. They have been very good at hitting their dates. Their space station was built on time. Their robots on the moon worked on time. The gap between the US and China is shrinking. This is a competitive scoreboard for the whole world. If we keep having delays, China might get there first. This is a big reason why SpaceX is moving so fast. They are the only ones building the big ships we need to stay ahead. While SpaceX and NASA work together, they also have different speeds. NASA has to be very careful with your tax dollars. They have to follow many rules. SpaceX can take risks. They can blow things up to see how they break. This test and learn method is much faster than doing math on a computer for five years. It is the difference between reading about how to ride a bike and actually getting on one and falling off. Modern rockets use software for almost everything. In the old days, pilots had to flip hundreds of switches. Now the computer does the hard work. This reduces human error. It also makes the rocket smarter. A SpaceX rocket can talk to itself. It checks its own health thousands of times every second. If it sees a tiny problem, it can fix it before it becomes a big problem. This is why their rockets are so safe. Fewer manual steps mean less chance for a person to make a mistake. It also means they need fewer people to run a launch. Old rockets needed hundreds of people in a control room. SpaceX can do it with just a few dozen. This makes the whole process cheaper and faster. It is like the difference between an old factory with thousands of workers and a modern one with robots. The modern one is just more efficient. This is how they are able to launch four times in a single day. They have simplified the system so much that it becomes routine. Space is moving from rare events to routine work. Think about railroads or airplanes. At first they were dangerous and expensive. Only a few people could use them. Then they became a system. They started running on schedules. You could count on them. This is what is happening to space right now. We are building the railroads to the stars. When we have daily launches, the cost will drop even more. This will enable things we can only dream of now. We could build large bases on the moon where people live and work. We could send hundreds of people to Mars at a time. This is not magic. It is engineering and planning. It is about building a system that resets fast. Each launch is a step toward that future. The noise and the fire are exciting, but the steady progress is what matters. We are watching the birth of a new era. It is an era where the sky is no longer the limit. It is just the beginning of the road. SpaceX has a goal of making life multi-planetary. This means they want humans to live on more than than one planet. This sounds like a movie, but they are building the hardware for it today. To get to Mars, you need a lot of stuff. You need food, water, air, and fuel. Starship is designed to carry 100 tons of cargo. That is about as heavy as 15 fully loaded pickup trucks. To build a city on Mars, you would need thousands of these launches. That is why they are so focused on speed. They are not just trying to win a race. They are trying to build a bridge. Every time they launch from Florida or California, they are testing that bridge. They are finding the weak spots. They are making it stronger. This is the information hunt. They are gathering data that no one else has. This data is the most valuable thing they own. It tells them how to survive in the harshest place humans have ever gone. The consequences of this change are huge for other countries too. Russia used to be a big player in space. Now they are falling behind because they did not innovate. Europe is struggling to build their new rocket. It is also years late. China is the only one keeping up. This is a global game of strategy. The winner will control the future of communication and travel. Your tax dollars are being used to make sure the US stays in the lead. This is not just about pride. It is about jobs and technology. The things we learn in space help us on Earth. Better 
batteries and better computers come from these missions. By pushing the limits of what a rocket can do, we push the limits of what we can do as a species. This is the ultimate competence hierarchy. The people who solve the hardest problems are the ones who lead the way. In the future, you might look up and see a rocket every day. It will be as normal as seeing a plane. You will not even stop to look at it. That is when we will know we have succeeded. When space is boring, it means it is working. It means the driveways are clear and the roads are open. It means the $4.1 billion price tag is a thing of the past. It means we have finally mastered the Earth's spin and the ocean's reach. This journey started with simple ideas about fuel and physics. It grew into a global race. Now it is a steady march toward the stars. SpaceX is leading that march with two coasts and a vision that never stops. They are proving that with enough hard work and smart choices, the impossible becomes possible. We are lucky to be alive to see it. The next 10 years will be the most exciting time in the history of space. We are going back to the moon and we are staying this time then we are going to Mars, and it all starts with a rocket rolling down a hill in Florida. 